Hi everyone. In this video, we'll take a look at the steps needed to perform a calorimetry calculation. We'll solve the following problem. A 20 gram piece of aluminum is heated to 100 degrees Celsius. It could be placed in boiling water. The aluminum is then placed into a beaker which contains 85.0 grams of water, which is at an initial temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. What will be the final temperature of the water? To answer this question, we're going to make three assumptions. We're going to ignore any temperature changes for the glass, uh, the beaker. We're also going to assume that all the heat lost by the aluminum is transferred directly to the water. Finally, we will assume that the heat transfer will continue until the water and the aluminum reach the same final temperature. Now we'll take a look at the equations and values we'll use in order to complete this calculation question. The starting temperature or the initial temperature of water was 20 degrees Celsius. The initial temperature of the aluminum was 100 degrees Celsius. The mass of the water is 85.0 grams. This would be 85.0 milliliters. The mass of the aluminum is 20.0 grams. The specific heat capacity of aluminum is 0.215 calories per gram degree Celsius. For water, the specific heat capacity is 1.00 calories per gram degree Celsius. We can calculate a change in temperature by subtracting the initial temperature from the final temperature. This right here says that the heat lost, that's what Q is, heat lost or gained by materials, that the heat lost by the aluminum, that's why we'll have a negative sign here, will be equal to the heat gained by the water. Remember the aluminum has been heated to a very high temperature, the water is colder, so when we put the hot aluminum into the cold water, the water will gain heat energy, the aluminum will lose heat energy, and we've assumed that those values will be equal to each other. Let's start working through this problem. Remember we've made the assumption that the heat lost by the aluminum is going to equal the heat gained by the water. So now we want to start uh, using the relationship Q equals MC delta T. Uh, Q is for heat energy, M is for mass, C is for specific heat capacity, delta T means the change in temperature of a material. So the negative Q for the aluminum can be calculated by taking the negative, uh, we're multiplying the negative by the mass of the aluminum, multiplied by the specific heat of the aluminum, and then this is the delta T, the final temperature minus the starting temperature of the aluminum. This will be equal to the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of the water multiplied by the delta T of the water which is the TF minus the starting temperature of the water. Now what I want to do is distribute the mass and the specific heat. I'll multiply that by the TF value and I'm going to record that right here. Notice I keep the negative sign. Now because it's minus the initial temperature of the aluminum that will change the sign to a plus sign here. So I'll have the mass of the aluminum multiplied by the specific heat of the aluminum, multiplied by the starting temperature of the aluminum. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this side of the equal sign. We'll have the mass of the water, multiplied by the specific heat of the water, multiplied by the final temperature. Remember that is the same temperature for both the water and the aluminum. Then we're going to subtract, because of the minus sign here, the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of the water, multiplied by the starting temperature of the water. Now what I want to do is combine the things which have the final temperature. So this and this I'm going to combine. So I'll have the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of the water multiplied by the final temperature. And to this I will add the mass of the aluminum, the specific heat of the aluminum multiplied by the final temperature. This is allowing me to combine the final temperature terms. Now I want to do the same thing with the starting temperatures. So you'll see that I'll take this one right here, which is for the water, this one right here, which is for the aluminum. So we'll take the mass of the aluminum multiplied by the specific heat of the aluminum multiplied by the starting temperature of the aluminum. And to this we will add the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of the water, multiplied by the starting temperature of the water. So now we're ready to substitute in the values. So we're starting with 
85 grams. Remember, this is the mass of the water. I've left off the 0, 0.0 just to save room. This is multiplied by the specific heat of water, which is one calorie per gram degree Celsius, multiplied by the final temperature. My next step is to take the value 20 grams. This is the mass of the aluminum. I'll multiply this by the specific heat capacity of the aluminum, 0 0.215 calories per gram degree Celsius. And again, this is going to be multiplied by the final temperature. When I multiply these values through, I'll then be able to add the two values and have them multiplied both by Tf. So again, this was for the water, 85 grams of water. The specific heat of water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. There's 20 grams of aluminum. Specific heat of aluminum is 0 0.215 calories per gram degree Celsius. So I've set up one side of the equation. My next step is to do the same thing with the other side of the equation that we solved earlier. So again here I'm going to take the water value, 20, I'm sorry, this is the aluminum value, 20 grams of aluminum multiplied by the specific heat capacity of aluminum, 0 0.215 calories per gram degree Celsius, and this is going to be multiplied by 100 degrees Celsius. This is the starting temperature of the aluminum. And to this we're going to be adding Let's get that sign in here, thank you. And we're going to add now the values for the water. 85 grams of water multiplied by the specific heat of water, one calorie per gram degree Celsius. And this will be multiplied by the starting temperature of the water, which was 20.0 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to uh, track again here, this is the water, this is the aluminum. So now what I want to do is multiply through. I'll have 85 times Tf, and I'm going to multiply this one through 20 times 0.215. I'm going to leave off the units here for a moment. We'll take a look at what happens with the units in just a little bit. So I'll have 85 Tf plus 20 times 0.215 is 4.3 Tf. Now I want to do the same thing here so I'll have 4.3 times 100, so that will give me 430. And then I want to take 85, multiply by 1, multiply by 20. This gives me a value of 1700. Let's go ahead and add these together. I'll get 85 plus 4.3 is 89.3 times Tf. This is going to equal 430 plus 1700 plus 430, I wrote those backwards, and that's going to be equal to 2130. And let's go ahead and just put a line through this, just saying that 89.3 Tf will be equal to 2130. Now we haven't really considered the units in this calculation. Let's go back and look at those. So here, grams cancels with grams, grams cancels with grams. We're going to be left with calories per uh, degree Celsius. Here, grams cancels with grams, degree Celsius with degree Celsius, grams with grams, degree Celsius with degree Celsius. So this will leave calories and calories. Here again, we have calories, calories, over degree Celsius and degree Celsius. Here, we have just calories, no other unit is remaining. So we have calories here also. So let's go ahead and solve for Tf. Here we go. Tf will be equal to 2130 divided by 89.3. Now, let's take a look at this in dimensional analysis, which will allow us to plug in the units. 2130, the unit is calories, calories. So I'm going to put that over 1, and then we're going to divide this by 89.3. That means I need to, I had a little problem there with my pen, I need to put 89.3 in the denominator of this next fraction, 89.3, and remember that was calories over degree Celsius. So I need calories in the denominator here, degree Celsius in the numerator. Calories will cancel with calories. I'll be left with a unit of degree Celsius. 
because all of my values early in the problem had three significant digits or more, I'll report a final answer with three significant digits. So my final answer is 23.9 degrees Celsius. And we can see that we've got that right here. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope that you found this video helpful.